Hi, my name is Ed Gottlieb and I'm very excited to have this opportunity to give you a virtual tour of our wastewater plant in Ithaca, New York. Our plant's beginning a five-year process of equipment upgrades and uh, improvements, so you probably should check out our website to see what has changed since we made the video. In the first video segment, Dan Raymer, our chief operator, gave you an overview of what we do. In this segment, we're going to get into some of the real details. We're going to cover preliminary treatment and primary treatment. Now to reach our plant, water has to flow downhill by gravity. And where the ground gets level, we need pump stations to kind of push that water along to get it to us. Uh, eventually, the pipes come in, they're all merging together as they get closer and closer to the plant, and they're coming about 30 feet underground in a four foot diameter pipe. This is a trunk line close to the plant. Though the amount of flow right now is fairly low, the pipe diameter is large and far underground. In the Influent building, the wastewater passes through a fence of metal bars, spaced an inch apart. This bar screen catches large debris, mostly rags, sticks, and rocks, which could clog up the pipes and pumps. The waste caught by the bars is raked up, lands in a dumpster, and goes to a landfill. This initial removal of material that can cause problems is called preliminary treatment. Now, after screening, the raw wastewater is pumped from way underground to way above ground to the head of the plant, where it can begin treatment. The influent pumps have to lift wastewater up 50 feet. Water is very heavy and lifting so much of it so high takes large amounts of energy. The influent pumps use more energy than anything else in the whole plant. Now along with using the processes found in nature, we also use chemicals in the treatment of the wastewater. We start out with ferrous chloride to react with dissolved phosphorus and turn it into a solid form of phosphorus, a precipitate that can be removed from the wastewater. Now here, you can see a precipitation reaction occurring. You can't see chemicals dissolved in these containers. When they mix, a chemical reaction occurs and a precipitate forms. This precipitate is slightly denser than water and slowly settles to the bottom. Primary treatment is the simplest and most common way of treating wastewater all around the world. Gravity is used to separate out things that are lighter than water that'll float and heavier than water that'll settle so that they can be removed from the wastewater. This is a process that happens in nature. Streams and rivers are powerful enough to carry along heavy materials with them, even boulders during storms. Now once this water slows down when it reaches a lake or the ocean, all those things that are heavier than water that have been carried along can settle to the bottom and lighter things do float up to the top. Like a stream or river, the water coming to the wastewater plant is constantly moving. It's flowing out of a building, flowing downhill, in drains, eventually reaching our influent pumps where it's pumped uphill to the head of our plant. When the wastewater reaches a primary settling tank, it finally has a chance to slow down. And no doubt you can guess what happens to the heavy solids when it reaches that. This is a sample of our influent being poured into an Imhoff cone. This is something we do three times every day. Uh, we measure how much settleable solids end up in the bottom of the cone after one hour of settling. And this is a time-lapse version of that, so you can see what happens at least in the first 10 minutes or so. When a river is dammed for any purpose, a lake that is created behind the dam acts as a settling basin, and all the sediment carried by the stream or river feeding it will settle out there. It builds up over time and can eventually fill it all the way to the top, as happened in this case. In the primary tanks, we need to continually remove those solids so they don't fill up the tank. So here we are in the bottom of a primary settling tank. Now this wooden wall is a baffle. It slows the water down that's coming in so that the solids can have a chance to settle to the bottom. Now this is a long fiberglass flight. There are a whole bunch of them. They're attached to chains at each end. The chains pull them along and they're pulled by a motor up on top of the tank. Now these flights move slowly along the bottom of the tank, dragging the solids with them and dumping them into the trench there at the head of the tank. Now they have to move very slowly so they don't stir up the stuff on the bottom back into the water. Now this process is removing about 30% of what comes in. Whoa, whoa! Hey, who's the wise guy up there? Turn these off. Our primary pumps uh, remove those solids in the form of a sludge from the bottom of the primary tank and pump them to another part of our plant for processing. Now the flights that have pushed those solids to the head of the uh, primary tank for removal 
Now swing up to the top of the tank, where they do a second job for us. Waste such as fat, oil, grease, rubber, and plastic float. They're pushed to the end of the tank where they are stopped by a baffle. When this pipe is tipped, the trapped material flows into it. A pump pushes what flows down the pipe into another part of the plant for further treatment. Primary treatment removes about 30% of the pollutants in the wastewater. 